Hi, welcome to Senior Solutions. I'm your host, Karen Halloran from Azor Healthcare. Today on the show, we have Deb Colometta. Thank you for joining us, Deb. It's so good to see you. Thank you for having me here. I'm delighted. So we may as well just jump right in. We're talking about on yard, online yard sales today. Yes. yes. So how did you get involved in the online process. <laughs> totally accidentally. I had probably never been to an in-person yard sale in my life. I had driven by them and always thought about going, but I had never really made much use of them. And we uh, had a situation where we were living in a small, we are living in a small house, and we just felt like we had too much stuff. We were overcrowded in our living space. And we were thinking about, do we move, do we stay? But either way, we decided to declutter our home and it yielded this huge pile of working items. And I was frantic trying to get rid of things. I started giving them away to friends and family. And somebody had said to us, you know, you could probably sell this for a lot of money. And I was thinking, well, where would I sell it? And that person opened up a world of online yard sales to me. I had never heard of it before, and uh, he showed me a few apps that could be downloaded on my phone for free, and a few groups on Facebook that I could join. I saw that other people that I knew were already bartering, trading, selling online, and I couldn't wait to get started. It seemed like the perfect solution because I had these things that were maybe too fragile to donate or too special or meaningful to me, you know, to just kind of like trash or things that I didn't want to see end up in a landfill. So it was like this perfect solution that I found for my family's excess stuff. And ever since then, I've been on this, I've been a mom on a mission to help spread the word and help people to learn more about this valuable resource. That's fantastic. I mean, we all have so many different things that are just cluttering up our house and who can't use a little bit extra cash. Yes. Now, if somebody listening to this, how would they get started with an online yard sale? There are a number of ways to get started with it. You can do something like, as simple as use your phone. You can um, go to an app store or the Android store and look for things, um, apps like OfferUp, or um, other ways that you can sell include Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you can search Facebook Marketplace, you can search online yard sale groups by entering the name of your town and then online yard sale, just as if you would, were searching for a new friend. And you'll see a list of places populate that are either in your town or nearby. And that's where I would start. Now, if you don't have a Facebook account, no problem. Chances are you know somebody who does, so you can just ask someone that you know to help you get started or maybe even if they're a relative, maybe they'd be willing to post a few of your items as well. I know I have sold a lot of things on behalf of my parents. They don't have any online presence and they've even had a lot of success with it. And many times um, when they go to broker the sale, they end up giving the item for free to the people and everybody feels good. My parents know that the item is uh, going to a new home, that somebody's gonna use it, somebody's going to appreciate it. They don't have to trash it. I don't have to store it in my garage and everybody wins. That's great. I know like a lot of seniors, they're downsizing. They have all yeah. these things, it may be in their attic, in their basement. They haven't touched for years, maybe yeah. decades. So this is a great way for them to make some money and get rid of these items before they move. Absolutely. Now what would be the hardest part of the selling process? I think it's something, we were actually talking a little bit about this off camera. It's, it's deciding what you wanna sell and what you just have to let go and give away. Because sometimes you have something that's high value and you think, oh, I spent so much money on this item. I don't wanna give this away. But if you go through the steps of trying to sell it and it doesn't, you know, nobody seems to want it, you've tried lowering the price, you've been patient, it's that moment where you have to decide, you know what, I, I just have to give this away. And most of the time, I don't think there's anything that I haven't been able to give away for free at some point, but it's making that difficult decision of, you know, when to know I've tried to sell it, I didn't have success, it's time to let it go. And as we were talking about, 
the free space in my home is worth more to me than the pride <laughs> that I have in, in saying, I am not gonna give this item away for free. Right. So just learning to, to strike that balance. So that's one of the difficult things. And also another thing is just getting started. I think a lot of people, they have a pile of things that they wanna sell and it sits there week after week. So you really just wanna get some momentum going. You wanna give away some items, free cycle it to your friends, pick one or two things to start with, see how it goes, and then go from there. Just get some traction going in your selling journey, and you'll see it's actually fun. It's fun to get that cash in your hands or Venmo. It's fun to get rid of your things, and it's fun to make the connections with people in your community who are actually very grateful for getting these items at a low cost or sometimes for free. But everybody wins. That's great. And there are so many things now with the web. Being on the internet, there's yeah. so many different avenues that people can go through. Now, what if somebody makes a sale, okay, and then the sale falls through? How do you do mitigate that? Um, you know, that has happened to me um, on a few occasions. And one thing that I've mentioned a few places in my book is that this being stood up happens almost most frequently for items mm -hmm. that I'm giving away for free, believe it or not. Really? Yes. So I think people feel like they, they don't have a, a commitment. It's not like, a, well, I'm going to show up to buy it, or they don't have any skin in the game. So they've decided, uh, eh, I'm not just not going to show up for the item, or you oh. know, I leave it out on my front steps. and. It start maybe it will start to rain. Now I have to pull the item back in. They didn't show up. It gets really frustrating. That's why I advise people: don't sell yourself short. Like, if you have something that is of value and you do have a little bit of time and you can store it for just maybe a couple of weeks, try to sell it. See what you can get first. Um, and as far as it does happen, people, uh, you know, do. Uh, stand people up and you know that's the way the world goes sometimes right. but sometimes before the sale you can reach out to the person and just say I'm just confirming um, you know th these are the details again and and contact them through the app or through Facebook never giving your personal information we we'll on only want to do this in a totally safe way uh, but trying to reach out to them ahead of time and just ask them say if you change your mind would you just let me know and usually they will if they if they renege. Sometimes they're feeling shy, like, oh, I don't want that anymore. But if you give them an open space to say no, you're gonna save everybody a lot of time. Um, and you know, it happens, but most of the time, I just have so much fun selling things or giving things away, and that's been a, a great thing for me. Uh, what are the advantages of selling, you know, an online yard sale versus an actual in-person yard sale. Oh, where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the you know, I don't want the in-person yard sale people to get upset with me and write letters, but um, I feel like an in-person yard sale is so much more difficult. I've never been able to pull one off because you have to wait till the conditions are right, the weather is good, in this area, the right time of year, because you know you can't be selling in the winter. Um, I have to wait till I don't have sports for my kids or um, commitments for myself. I mean, it's that, that way it's just never gonna happen. And in the meantime, you actually have to get people to help you load the stuff down to the curb, load it back into your garage, and then maybe you end up getting, selling it any, you know, giving it away anyway. So I feel like I saved myself a lot more time by selling as I go. So that was another thing where, uh, you know, I, I did it the reverse way. I gathered the pile of stuff and then started selling. But what I would recommend to people to do is to sell as you go along so that you don't get that big pile. Mm -hmm. If you're getting to the point where you've got several items to sell, it's time to start just giving things away. You've got a little bit of a, uh, you have to expedite the process a little bit. So I now sell as I go. 
And another advantage is that you don't have to sit there and haggle with people over the price of these items. That's way too emotional for me. Mm -hmm. I'd be upset and frustrated. and So I don't think it would be a good experience for me. We haven't tried it, but we haven't had to because right. the online yard sales have worked out so well for us. Works out better. Yeah. But as you say, you can use help. Now say somebody has kids, either young kids or older, how do you get them involved in the process? <laughs> well, I just, uh, for me, being the quote unquote kid of my parents, they say, hey, you brokered the sale, you keep the cash if there's cash involved. And I would say that same thing for younger people. If they help post it or you have relatives who um, are helping you out moving furniture or whatnot, let them keep the sale money or split it with them to in incentivize them to help you and participate. And, and usually you'll find most of the time they'll be happy to, especially if you're, right. if you're paying them. Exactly. <laughs> kids always like to make a little money. Yeah, right. And, and it's nice to teach kids to want to help in the process. I know a lot of times when I'm decluttering, I make sure that I involve my children. Now, they're way too young to help with a sale, brokering a sale, but they can help with the decluttering process. And that helps when we go to a store because then they're slower to ask, mom, can we get this toy? Mom, can we get this giant footprint item? Because they know we're just gonna either be tripping over it or we're gonna end up selling it. So going through this process is really transformative because it changes the way you buy things. If you just throw everything away, it's wasteful. If you just donate everything, sometimes it gets broken. But if you mindfully decide, what am I gonna donate? What am I gonna free cycle? What am I going to sell to friends? It forces you to be more reflective of the objects that are in your space. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so that you don't get a, a super cluttered space um, at the end of a few months later after selling all your things. Otherwise, you get a dumpster, you probably are going to be back to square one within a few months of clutter and recluttering your space. Oh, you so know? true. It, this so breaks true. the cycle. That's Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so it sounds like online yard sales are a form of en environmentalism. Definitely. I feel like with in the online yard sales, you're not only preventing working items from going into a dumpster or a landfill, you're helping community members who may be in need or people who just need um, you know, a lower price on a particular item. So you're not only preventing that item, maybe say a bicycle, from going into the garbage, that if the bicycle works, you're preventing another bicycle from being produced in a way, because that person's actually buying the recycled item. So you're you're just impacting the entire carbon footprint for that particular industry. And it's it may be a small step, but if everyone starts doing this and everybody starts thinking about what can I free cycle forward, then it really makes an impact on the environment. That's fantastic. Um, so besides the cash that people get for an online yard sale, are there any other, you know, benefits? Tons of benefits, like um, meeting people in the community, which mm -hmm. is my favorite. I have met so many people, um, and because I only sell things that I know to be working and, you know, at a really fair price, people are excited to meet me. I might run into them in the, to, in the, at the grocery store. It builds community, we're helping each other. I've met people who have bought my children's things and then next time I have something to give away, I might message them first. So we've created an exchange going. Um, and that's a really great way to build that mom and dad parent community, um, parents in general, to help their children um, get better known in the community and, and creating that goodwill and good feeling. So it's um, it's helping people, it's building community, it, it's helping the environment, and sometimes you make money while you're at it. So tons of great benefits. That's awesome. <laughs> now, in the beginning, you had started to tell me about your book. Yes. Can you tell us about your book? Yes, I wrote a book. It actually went to number one in its category on Amazon. It's called Best Offer best life and you can find it on Amazon or you can go to my website thedebsite.com and there you can get in touch with me connect with me you can buy the book and I have a free podcast with over a hundred episodes that talk about 
selling and strategies, mistakes I've made and, and so forth, but everything's distilled in this book where I've really boiled it down to the selling process. It's not too long, I, it's a quick read on purpose because I want families and empty nesters and people who are downsizing to read it quickly and get out there and start selling their things. So best offer, best life. Yes. I'm definitely gonna have to check into that. <laughs> I have to get myself a copy. So um, you had said your contact information. Do you wanna give the contact information again? And if you would like to get in touch with Deb at home, this would be how you would do so. Yes, you can find more information about me on the website, thedebsite.com, or connect with me on Instagram and Facebook, at Deb Colometta. I love hearing stories from people who have tried the methods and just given it a shot. And whatever I can do to help people become successful in this, then I feel like I've accomplished my mission. That's great. Well. Um, we like to end the show with three questions. So the first question to you would be, tell us a fun fact about you, something, it can be anything. <laughs> uh, one fun fact uh, would be, I started my career, I took a gap year between high school and college. I went to Syracuse University for communications and I started working at my favorite rock radio station, WAAF, and got to sit in on hundreds of interviews with rock stars and Ooh. I'm a rocker chick at heart. So you'd never <laughs> know it because I'm, <laughs> I'm a mom on a mission now, but um, yeah, I still, I still love to rock out. That's great. <laughs> that is great. Now, the second question is, do you have any pets? We love animals on the show. Oh, my kids would love a pet, but at this point, not, not quite yet, but I'm not going to say no, one, maybe one day in the future. And then the final question, do you have any plans to travel this summer? Not at the moment, but we're, we're taking all kinds of ideas. I know my kids want to go to a bunch of different places that they're learning about in school. Um, a couple of summers ago, we went to Hershey Park um, and went to Gettysburg. It was amazing, put it on every family's bucket list. That was a wonderful road trip from this area. Um, and last year we went to Universal, so we got to think of something good this year. <laughs> well, Deb, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. You've been a wealth of knowledge. I know I have to get rid of some of my st stuff and try an online yard sale. So thanks again for coming on the show. And I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And until next time, have a great day.